Train the muscles, not the joints. So welcome back to the Natural Glam Bodybuilding Friday Q&A. And today I'm gonna to answer a few questions. I'm a little bit behind schedule today. I'm just like running around trying to get everything done here. So life, right? That's, that's the hard part about doing this charity work on Natural Glam Bodybuilding YouTube channel. It's like, <laughs> I still gotta work. I still gotta do all these other things. So first question. First question is, somebody's asking me, do I do leg extensions? And why don't I do leg extensions if I don't? Well, the thing is with leg extensions is that you can hit the quadriceps from doing leg extensions. And this is okay, but what I have found is that when you're working the quadricep through a machine such as leg extension, an isolation movement like that, it's not really a natural movement. Most of the time when the quadricep is activated in normal life, your hamstring is also activated, or your adductors are activated, or your glute is activated. Like, usually the quadricep does not work on its own accord under tension, okay? If I'm throwing a kick or something, that's different because there's not really a lot of tension, you see? Like it's all the, the real resistance happens at the end of the kick. But when I'm running, I'm usually activating the hamstrings at the same time as activating the quadricep. So the problem is with this is that if you're only activating the quadricep, what happens is that it has a tendency to impinge and, and pull on the tendons and ligaments on the knee in a little bit more of an unnatural way because the hamstring helps pull the knee tight. So when the hamstring's activated at the same time as you're working the quadricep, it's like the hamstring helps stabilize the joint and then your quadricep can do its job. So the main reason why I don't do leg extensions is I find they just bother my knees and I've never really got any development from them. I find I just get more tension on the joints, but I don't necessarily get really good development in my quadricep without having joint pain. And my first priority is to avoid joint pain. Train the muscles, not the joints, right? So secondly, somebody just commented on one of my bench press videos and said, if I don't touch the chest, it doesn't count. That's a very simplistic way of looking at training. And it truly means you don't understand what's really going on when it comes down to bodybuilding, okay? This is the type of bullshit that I'm actually fighting against on my YouTube channel right now, okay? So just so you guys know, this is the type of crap that I'm actually fighting. This ignorance is the type of ignorance that I'm actually fighting against. Uh, so anyway, just stupid stuff. Like if, who, who could take a hammer to the face more? And kind of like the old old fashioned drinking games where a guy would drink and then whoever falls down first is, uh, is a pussy and, and the guy that can drink more is less of a wimp, you know? But in the end, both got liver damage from it just to prove who's tougher. It's just, it's just stupid shit, right? So the same thing with this touching the chest game that's going on out there. Touching the chest is necessary if it's right for you, but not if it's not right for you, okay? That's it. Okay, so bad screen name. And I, that's a great, great name for YouTube. Bad Screen Name's asking me, he goes, uh, uh, when you squat, do you use a belt? Now, I don't know where you've been there, Bad Screen Name, but I've been making vlogs for, you know, four years now. And you can see in every single video, I have never worn, not even one time, a belt. So you've just shown yourself as a person that's not watching my videos, okay? So watch my videos. I don't understand why people want to ask me questions when I answer these questions just by showing you. You know, I, I, I answer this stuff. So no, I don't wear a belt. Why don't I wear a belt? Okay, that's a different thing. Maybe I haven't explained why I don't wear a belt, but don't ask me if I do wear a belt because I've shown you, okay? So I don't wear a belt because I want to activate the core. And I answer this in another Friday Q&A about ab development and do I train the core and all this kind of stuff. Well, when I don't wear a belt, I actually end up training the core. I end up teaching the lower back how to fire properly. And at the same time, I don't want to develop the imbalances that may come from splinting my back. It's almost like putting your arm in a cast. It ends up small after six weeks. Well, it's the same thing when you splint your back all the time. A lot of the lower back muscles will not get activated and it could lead to injury. I, I believe that it will lead to more injuries by splinting your back every time you lift heavy weight because it'll create a major difference in strength between your main prime movers and your stabilizers of your lower back. And if anything, you want them to be a little bit more close together. And I have found that my lower back has not grown in size from it. Like it's not like my waist has grown from not wearing a belt. If anything, the opposite might've been true. You know, like I, I've actually tightened up and my ab development's coming in and my lower back development. So. I always had a great developed lower back. I always had the Christmas tree and everything on stage. And I think that's one of the reasons is because I didn't wear a belt. So I was forced to activate those lower back muscles all the time. So Skater Loro is asking if he should skate less or she, I don't know if it's he or she. I didn't look at your account yet. So uh, he's asking, I'll just say he, he's, he's asking if he should skate less, you know, skateboard less if he wants to be buff. Well, the thing is there is either or, you know, and the thing is you have to choose where you're going to put your energy. And you cannot be a jack of all trades, as they say. You cannot be an expert rocket scientist as well as professional athlete, as well as 
uh, you know, gold digger as well as uh, astronaut. Like, like at some point you have to figure out how to specialize. And with the physical body, this is really important. So if you notice that you're a hard gainer, okay, if you are having a real hard time recovering from weight training, and then you're skating a lot, uh, you have to make a change, right? So if you're skating a lot and you're making gains, don't worry about it, enjoy your skating. But if it's bothering you and you wanna make more gains and you notice you're burning a lot of calories, you're working up a sweat all the time skating, not to mention the injuries and the tweaks and stuff that come from ballistic type sports and jumping off ramps and all this kind of stuff and you know, nutting yourself on a crossbar somewhere. The bottom line is, is that if you want to be a specialist, you know, if you become a specialist, you will become elite and you do have to at some point decide what to do with your body. So if you're burning too many calories and you're burning off muscle, yeah, the obvious choice is to cut down on the cardio a bit and specialize more in weight training. YRGG2004 is asking about supplements. What are the best supplements to use? Now, I don't use a lot of supplements these days. You know, once in a while I use some branched chain amino acids. Uh, once in a while I might use some glutamine or something, but the best supplements in my opinion, the ones that work the best, you know, uh, is creatine. Creatine worked the best, you know, as far as putting on a little bit of water weight and some endurance energy. I always noticed my strength went up really quick. It helped bring more water in the muscle cells and I noticed that uh, it was easy to get a pump. NO2, like arginine type supplements, those worked great for getting a pump and also increasing blood volume and, uh, and uh, recovery. My recovery would go up when I took uh, arginine type supplements, okay? And from there, there's arginine, there's creatine, glutamine, is also one of those holy trinity of supplements. I found that glutamine really helps with recovery and recuperation and it is one of those raw materials uh, that your body needs for recovery. Okay, so glutamine is the most abundant amino acid in all your muscle tissue. So yeah, I'd recommend glutamine. So basically creatine, arginine supplement and glutamine. I think that would be three of the most important supplements to take if you are a supplement type person for sure. And of course, the fourth thing would be branch chain amino acids. Now, Mr. Smoking Chimpanzee is asking, uh, he says he does four sets of 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, and six reps. Is this good? Is he working both high reps and low reps? You know, this is a very general question. You're only giving me one sentence. So if you just say 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, I don't know whether you're going to failure on these reps. I don't know whether you're just doing 12 reps and you can normally do 20 reps with that weight. I don't know basically how you are um, conducting this experiment, okay? so. Whenever I talk about reps of 15 or reps of 17 or reps of 10, usually I'm assuming you're going to failure or close to. Like that's as many reps as you can do for that set, right? So I would assume by you saying this, you did 12 reps with a certain weight, you couldn't do any more reps, and then you went to 10 reps with a certain weight, you couldn't do any more reps with that, and then you raised the weight so that you could only do eight reps, you know, I was assuming that you're kind of doing that. Now there's a number of different ways to pyramid. This is called pyramiding, okay? 12 reps, 10 reps, eight reps, it's called pyramiding. Now there's different ways to pyramid, right? There's hypertrophy way to pyramid and then there's strength way to pyramid. The strength way to pyramid is to use the first two or three sets more as warmups, if anything, in order to get to super heavy weight for five to six reps, right? And you might be able to do, you know, one extra rep in there or two extra reps, but really what the whole point is, is to be able to handle heavier weight than you normally could. And you basically are just practicing what that feels like, okay? And then on another day, you know, so you're not challenging the joint so much, then you would probably rep out. You would go to failure with sets of 15 or sets of 12 or something like that, because then that would help replenish the area, help hit the muscles, but you're not wearing out the actual joints and cartilage and tissue as much, right? So I always went back and forth from this. So like I said, this question's pretty general, so it's very hard for me to answer it because you're, it's too open-ended, right? So are you doing high reps and low reps? You're, you're mainly doing low reps there. You're mainly doing low reps. That's, that's, that's the best answer I can give you because it's just as ambiguous as your question. So yeah, but I'd say anything above 10 reps to 30 reps is, is classified medium to higher reps. And, and of course I'm assuming you're hitting failure, right? So Jay Bradley's saying that his friend is doing a full body workout three times a week and he's doing one exercise and three sets each body part, but his friend is not sore and he's not worn out the next day. He just feels kind of dead, but he's not getting sore from it. Okay, so again, very open question. This is why I do consultations, okay? So you guys that know me, uh, and if you've checked out my website, you'll see that I actually do consultations because these questions are very general, very gray. So the bottom line is, is he going to failure on the sets? I've seen people say they do three sets and I've seen them do this. I actually watched a lady the other day on the cell phone while she's doing her sets, talking away, like she's having a cup of tea as she's doing her bench presses and her rows and everything. How intense is he training? Is he even trying? Is he training hard? Is he just messing around? You know, there's two different levels. I mean, you could be on a recliner doing arm curls and only getting five or six reps when you could probably do a hundred. 
uh, but that's not necessarily training, you know what I'm saying? So how hard is he training, first of all? Is he hitting failure? Most people don't even do that. Most people don't even get close to failure when they train, right? Except for in the heavy sets, and that's why they stick to the heavy sets, because that hurts less, right? They just kind of strain and then can't get any more, and then they put the weight down. But once you get them in the higher weights, they kind of avoid that because that hurts, right? They have to feel the burn and they feel the muscular fatigue and, and all this uh, discomfort. And that's where the real hypertrophy comes from, right? So you have to kind of do a blend of both. So if he's not getting sore, there's a possibility that he's not actually trying hard enough or he's sticking in just one rep range and just getting stuck there and just overtraining. So guys that just do five reps or six reps or eight rep sets, and then they're just always stuck there, but they never change the rep ranges. They're never changing the range of motion. They're never changing the angle of attack, you know, from incline to decline to flat. You know, you have to change things up. So I guess, so I'm guessing he's probably stagnated because he's doing the same thing all the time, or he's not putting enough effort in, or he's not doing enough reps. He's basically just sticking to heavy weights and just experiencing nervous system burnout, which is exactly what most effing beginners do. They just try to lift as much weight as they can do to prove to their friends that they're, you know, somehow valuable to the world. I don't know what it is, but they're just basically doing the big pissing contest where look what I lifted, oh, I, oh look what I lifted, but they're not actually doing it to see if they're going to get a result. They're not actually lifting with a strategy. They're not actually lifting to say, okay, this is what's going to work for me to build muscle. So if your friend's feeling burned out, most likely he's lifting too heavy, too much all the time because he's too lazy. He's not actually putting the effort into the medium rep ranges, like the 10 to 20 to 30 rep ranges. This is a very strong possibility. Check it out. There's most likely a possibility that he's having nervous system burnout because he's always straining. And straining works well when you're kind of weak. But once you get strong and you strain all the time, you will snap something. So this is the law of the jungle in the gym. This is just what happens. And everybody discovers it once they gain a certain amount of strength. But beginners, they, at first, it's like you're just kind of fumbling around. So anyway, check this out. Watch what he's doing. And then let me know in the comments down below. And then maybe we'll hone this up a little bit more. So James Bailey is saying that he's become a bicycle courier. So he's you know, riding his bike around all the time, burning a lot of calories. And then he's saying, should he adapt his workout or should he just, you know, uh, what should he do to, to gain muscle mass and strength? You're gonna have to up your calories. That's the main thing. You're gonna have to make sure you eat enough and you're gonna have to make sure you sleep enough. So you're gonna have to go home and you're gonna have to have naps. You're gonna have to make sure you're fully recovered. Then when you go to the gym, then you train. And yeah, some days you'll feel like going heavy. Some days you'll feel like going light. And then you're just gonna have to see what happens with your body. And at some point, if bodybuilding is more important to you, then you might have to change jobs. That's that's kind of the reality, right? It doesn't mean that you can't increase muscle mass while doing cardio, but if you're a hard gainer and you're having trouble gaining, then you have to change the cardio or something. So basically the other thing you can do is lower the intensity. So don't sprint so much when you're doing the courier type stuff. Try not to get your heart rate so high that you can barely speak because if you're getting your heart rate really high, what'll happen is your body gets into burning protein. So what you can do is just lower the intensity or the speed at which you go. So you could tell by, if you can have a normal conversation as you're riding your bike, that means you will be at an intensity level that you will preserve muscle mass at. Okay, so that's the other strategy you can employ keep that intensity down on your cardio type sessions and save that intensity for your weight training sessions, right? So D Mason's asking how low he can go on carbs without sacrificing muscle. Well, the answer is pretty obvious. You'll, you'll find out, right? Like if you start going low on carbs and your strength just plummets down like really fast, then you just found out exactly how low you can go and sacrifice muscle. So what you'll have to do is bring those carbs up and see where it is, where's that sweet spot where you don't lose strength so fast. Okay, you have to do an experiment because there is no one right number. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's just like me saying uh, for a cat, a cat needs to eat, you know, 100, 200, 300 calories a day. And then a man, okay, he should just eat 300 calories a day. So no, there's different sizes going on, different animals. Well, people are different, metabolisms are different. So depending on you will depend on how much carbs you need. So the answer to this question is, what do you watch out for? And what you watch out for is how fast is your strength plummeting? And if your strength is going down way too fast, then that is a sure sign that you are sacrificing muscle tissue, okay? So it is normal to lose a little bit of strength, okay, a little bit of strength, like maybe a rep or two, but not to, you know, all of a sudden feel dead tired. You'll notice your muscles will feel really flat, okay? You'll have to play around with this, but ideally you only wanna lose about a pound a week. If you're losing more than a pound a week, then chances are you're losing muscle mass, okay? So you don't wanna lose more than a pound a week. And uh, you know, that's a general term. It could be a pound and a half, whatever. But if you're losing five or six pounds a week, guess what? You're crash dieting, you're going way too low in your energy calories and you need to bring them up a bit. 
because that means your body's actually dipping into those protein stores which are held in your muscle tissue. Okay, so I hope that helps you out. So I'm losing the light today. Sorry guys, I was a little bit behind schedule, but uh, but yeah, that, that concludes Friday's Q&A. And I'll answer some more questions in individual videos this week, as well as in next week's Friday Q&A. So thanks a lot for tuning in. Make sure you check me out at naturalgallantbodybuilding.com and sign up for the newsletter there and go to the Facebook group, Natural Gallant Bodybuilding. And take care for now. Oh yeah, thanks for sharing my stuff.